concerto is called Our Gilded Veins, and it's inspired by the ancient Japanese art of kintsugi. Um, and I call it an art form, but really it's more of a philosophy, um, whereby if you break a bowl or a plate, for example, in the kintsugi tradition, what you do is you mend the, the bowl or the plate and put it back together using golden or gilded lacquering in order to highlight the breakage um, and also to celebrate the, the sort of history of the object. Um, and for me, that's, that's such a, um, a delicious metaphor for the human condition. Um, and as we all know, you know, life happens to us, and um, potentially trauma happens to us, um, and it's about how we deal with that trauma and how we integrate that within ourselves um, and how we then move forward in a positive, um, and, and, um, a positive existential way um, and, a, and a hopeful way, um, perhaps even. Um, so the, the narrative of the piece essentially starts in a place of trauma. Um, and so you'll hear, hopefully, in, in the, the orchestra, that we've got all these fragmented ideas and fragmented pieces of, of musical material that are all kind of floating around in disparate and, and, and kind of fractured ways. And essentially, the piece is all about trying to build that, that music back together. So you hear also gradually piece itself back together to become one whole cohesive um, unit, as we have Catherine, um, the soloist tonight, um, who um, is, is playing this sort of character who's gone through the trauma and who's trying to um, put together the, the pieces of their life, essentially. Um, and and un unbelievably, um, just last weekend, Catherine had um, a, a, a fairly nasty injury whereby she fractured her foot. Um, but she's been powering on and, 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 and soldiering on um, and doing an absolutely fantastic job as the consummate professional that, that she is. And she really is at the absolute height of, of her powers. Um, and Catherine and I have been talking about this flute concerto for um, a number of, of years now. And it's been so exciting and just such a privilege to work with the RSNO um, and, and hear the piece finally uh, come to life. So we're so, so excited to finally be able to share that with you tonight. Thank you.
Hello, my name's Helen and I'm the Associate Principal Flute of the Royal Scottish National Orchestra. And today we're in the lovely village of Balfron. In actual fact, we're in the garden house of the wonderful soloist from this evening's concert, the wonderful Catherine Bryan. Woo! Before we get to talk about Jay's amazing piece, Our Gilded Veins, I wondered if you could tell us a little bit about how you met him, where you heard him, and what, what interested you, what excited you about Jay's music? Yeah, so I first um, came across Jay when he took part in the RSNO's Composers Hub, which is an amazing um, platform for young composers. They can write a piece for the orchestra um, and get, they get to work with the orchestra and hear the orchestra perform it. Um, and he wrote an amazing piece. And after the sessions that evening, um, I went home and I was sort of thinking about what we played that day and his piece really, I couldn't kind of get it out of my mind. So I looked him up on Facebook <laughs> and I sent him a message and I said, look, um, have you written anything for flute? Because I, I love your music. Um, and he got back to me and said, I'll write you something. So he wrote me an amazing sort of seven minute piece for solo flute. And we met for coffee a few times. We talked about the piece and... Um, recorded it there's a, a video of it on, on YouTube actually. Had he written for flute before that? Not sort of nothing kind of solo right. um, so this was kind of I think his first main piece of flute and actually um, fast forwarding to, to now that piece forms a very kind of important part of the concerto so it's lovely that that there's that link there um, but even in our early conversations when we were talking about the, the solo piece that he wrote I said and a concerto. Will you write me a concerto? <laughs> Please. <laughs> yeah. So it was kind of very early on we, we um, thought about it. Um, and then fast forward again, um, a couple of years, we went to the RSNO and we said, look, we, we want to do this. We, Jay wants to write this concerto. And, and they were really happy to, to commission it. So it's lovely that it's kind of come out of something that yeah. the RSNO um, do, that connection between us. But it's funny when... when you know, I meet quite a lot of composers um, and people want to write write things for me, but there was something about Jay, really, really special about Jay. Even not knowing him, the very first time we communicated, there was sort of a connection between us. That, I hope and I think, um, changes the way that somebody writes for you. That is really interesting, actually, Catherine. So do you think that that connection that you had with him maybe influenced... The subject matter of the flute concerto? Quite possibly. We're both quite open people, I would say. Um, Jay and I were very emotionally quite open and, and, and I think that definitely allowed for the subject of the piece to be something we were both really comfortable in, in sort of tackling. The piece is based on, on kintsugi, which is an art form of Japanese pottery, which is making new pots from broken pots so it's putting the pieces of broken pots together with a gold gilding which celebrates the kind of breaks if you like and makes something perhaps new and even more beautiful so that's sort of the the this sort of idea behind the piece but what jay's done is is, is explored that in terms of human human form in if you like so um mental health and how the, the sort of broken parts of our lives um, can be put together to create something new and positive from from that. Uh, it's, it's really interesting isn't it because that that's actually really quite beautiful and how often mm. do we shy away from something that's broken or we just kind of we throw it away mm. but actually to celebrate mm. our, our brokenness and the beauty of that and actually and that's who we are isn't yeah. it it's, it's what what makes us who we are absolutely so in the concerto are there some really challenging bits for you yes in that? yes i mean i always sort of look at a piece initially obviously when you're visually looking at a piece and you're looking at the technical challenges of what you're playing and you know register and things like that and it's really hard i mean jay writes very very complicated um things but in a way once you get to sort of start learning the piece it's the emotional side of a piece that I enjoy putting over and that can often be more challenging than the technical side of things because you have to be able to communicate that um, sentiment or that, that atmosphere, that what you want to create in terms of the character and make that powerful on stage. And so to do that and all the technical stuff just kind of be 
just second secondary to that really is, yeah. is what's important so I think um that challenge is something that was quite daunting I think. yeah <laughs> it's interesting isn't it because I wonder if you know when you're on stage and you know some, sometimes things don't go quite as we want them to go and I wonder in that moment because of the subject matter it, it, would it be different for you this the, the, is it different for you knowing that actually this is about not necessarily about being perfect and being right but actually just being in the moment and celebrating what what happens in the moment is, is, is that different for this I don't know in some ways yes I mean I think unfortunately as sort of a musician you can kind of never get away from the the, the striving for perfection in terms of technically what you're doing because that's what we're, that's how what we're we trained Absolutely, you know it's yeah. hard to sort of shake that off um, but I think because this, it's so important with this piece that the, the journey and, and the different characters and the different facets of somebody's kind of mental state, I want that to come out so strongly in the piece and connect with people that that for me will be the, is, is the priority on stage. So, you know, in a way I'm hopefully won't really even notice if things aren't quite, cause I'm, I'm, that's my priority is getting yeah. that, um, that feeling across and that there's so much in the piece in terms of contrast of, of mood and and that that I think the, the contrast of that is really powerful and that I really want to get that across the flute the flute can sometimes be one of those instruments that um you know it's not necessarily the most successful solo instrument yeah. because you know you don't see that many solo flute players and I've always championed the flute as being um, a wonderful solo instrument but I think it's only a wonderful solo instrument if you really push the boundaries because the instrument is relatively limited in terms of range um, and dynamics compared to a lot of other instruments. So trying to find sort of the, the, the characters through the instrument to put all, these, all of these things over is what I hope will make it a success. Yeah, yeah. This whole piece is a celebration of who you are, who one is, exactly. and, actually, and that's just absolutely fantastic. It's, it's about individuality and totally. um, how we are all made up of our stories and who we are in that moment is a result of everything that has happened in our life up to that point. Absolutely. And, you know, for me, what happened for those 20 minutes on stage has then built on who I am. So I, I, it's just this ever-evolving journey which is su such a beautiful thing and I think even in learning the piece it's made me think more about things that happen in my life and things that are painful and don't go well and things that I've really struggled with and there's much more of an acceptance I think on my part um, of, of those things which is I mean thank you Jay for giving me that um, because that has been really powerful. It is an incredibly powerful thing, isn't it, mm. to accept who we are and mm. to celebrate who we are.